In this movie, we're going to continue where we left off looking at shape layers. Uh, I went ahead and created a project for this called Modifying Shapes. So let's go down to the timeline panel, open up the uh, shape layer, and we also, in addition to transform, have a contents area. So we open this up, and we have our shape here, Polystar 1. Once we click it to make it active, and assuming that we have the selection tool selected, we see the gradient manipulator tool. This center point determines the center color, or the first color of the gradient, and this outer dot determines the outer color of the gradient. So the problem is, the reason why we can't see the radial gradient is because this takes place over too far of a distance. So if we grab this last dot and drag it closer, we could actually see that black come in and close in on that white, which creates that radial gradient. Go out right about to the edge and then deselect, click away from the object to deselect. This is what we have. So it's already a significantly more interesting shape than just that plain old star. Let's adjust some of these other properties down here. Let's open up Polystar 1, and we can open up Polystar Path, and after the fact, we can adjust the number of points in this star. We can also adjust its position. Keep in mind this is different than the layer's position. As a matter of fact, as we move this, notice that the radial gradient stays put. If we deselect, that's kind of an interesting effect. I'm just going to undo that for now. We can also adjust the rotation of the star, the inner radius. That basically refers to the size of the inner points of the star and also the outer radius. And then we also have something that we haven't looked at yet, and that is inner roundness. So as we increase this, then we have smooth, round edges on the inside. And we also have outer roundness. This is great for kind of creating those flower power type of flower. Now what I want to do is increase the size of the star. And shape layers, kind of like the painting engine we looked at in the last chapter, these are based on vectors. So I go to Transform Polystar 1, and increase the scale value to make this star significantly larger. We can make it even fill our entire composition if we want. And as you can see when I deselect here, the quality is still razor sharp. I'm going to close the transform category and go up to gradient stroke. Here we have options for the gradient stroke. If we want to, we can adjust the start point from here or the end point from here. If we don't want to use the manual gizmo, I, I really prefer using this manual gizmo instead. We also have the highlight length, angle, the colors of the gradients. We can click here to edit the gradient. And we also have the opacity and the stroke width. Now one other thing I briefly wanted to mention about this is the dashes area. Go ahead and click plus on the dashes to create these dashes. It basically takes the stroke from a solid line to a series of dashes. As we decrease the number of dashes, we make smaller dashes. We could click plus again to add a gap and change the size of the gap. And we could keep clicking pluses and pluses and pluses to increase the number of dashes and gaps. So we could create these really irregular patterns around the stroke of our object. This is very similar to the way dashes and gaps work in Adobe Illustrator if you're familiar with that program. But one of the things that After Effects has on Illustrator is this offset parameter. And what we can do is click and drag this property which will offset that stroke, causing a moving trail around the outline of an object, which is really cool. And finally, if we open up Gradient Fill, we have some basic parameters for the Gradient Fill that we turned off, so we don't really need to deal with that right now. I'm going to close back up all this stuff, do some housekeeping here. Now, one of the things that's very powerful about shape layers is they can contain a lot of stuff, not just this one shape. I'm going to go ahead and select this Polystar 1, and you want to make sure that you're in the shape layer and that you're at this top level of the Polystar. So you don't want to select Polystar Path 1 or anything like that. You want to select the Polystar 1. And what I'm going to do is hit Command D or Control D on the PC to duplicate this star. And if we zoom out and move this around, you'll see that we've actually created two different stars on the same shape layer. So there's Polystar 2, Polystar 1. In the next movie, we're going to use this trick to really explore the power of shape layers because not only can we have multiple shapes on one layer, but we can combine them as well as we will see next.